Oh no, my Squid Industries product needs maintenance. If only there was a place I could go. That's right guys, today we're at Squid Industries. Now, what we wanna do here is not only look at the facility, but take an in-depth look at how one of these is made. So, we're gonna be learning from the big man himself, Lucas, and figuring out how does Squid Industries develop one of their products. Let's find out. Shit. All right, guys, so today's video is all about the manufacturing process. And as you can see, there are a bunch of incredible tools and equipment here at the Squid Industries HQ. So we need somebody who is smart enough and intelligent enough that knows how to operate all of this stuff to explain to us the process of what we have going on. So the idea is just to find somebody that's tall enough and handsome enough that really knows the whole thing. Oh, hey, Lucas, what's hey, up? Hey, what's up, Will? How you doing, man? Doing good, man. Good to see you. Dude, this place is insane. <laughs> Thanks a lot, man. Well, so I can't wait to see how you guys do your whole process. Is there anywhere you want to start? Yeah, let's start right over here with the aluminum. Awesome. All right. Yeah. All right. Let's get started. All right. So what do we got here? So we've got these 12 foot long aluminum extrudes. This is what all of our products are made of. Almost all of them. Yeah. So how many, how many handles can you make out of one of these? Generally, if the saw cutting is good, we can probably hit around 24 units. About 24 units out of each bar? Out of each bar, each piece of 12 And then, foot so bar. that's stacked four by three. That's right, yeah. We, grid. Oh and my we, God. we stack them together too, so that we can actually put them on the saws and cut them together at the same time, because cutting a one by one would just take way too long. So obviously you don't you don't work with 12 foot things, you cut them down. That's right, yeah. So is that the next step in the process? That's right, yeah. He's gonna head over to saw cutting. Sure, yeah, let's go, let's go check that out. Yeah. Okay, so you're gonna be cutting this down to size. That's right, right yeah. We're gonna put them on this horizontal bandsaw right here, our LS1600. Okay. Yeah, so these are bundled together in, in packs of 12 so that one person can carry it. Otherwise, we'd have them bundled all together, all 100 bars. Oh, wow. Uh, so it's not actually that heavy. It's it's pretty heavy. I'd say that this bundle here is probably about 35 pounds, but, but again. I mean, it looks a lot more than 35. I guess that's the benefit yeah. of aluminum. That's but... the benefit of aluminum because it's <laughs> nice and nice and light. What this is gonna look like in the end are these guys right here. I'm gonna take a look. Now, obviously this looks a lot longer than a Triton handle, yeah. but what happens is that when it goes into the machine, we'll actually cut two handles out of one piece of stock. Oh, really? Yep, that's right. The raw aluminum is cut with just a really rough cut on the saw here. It's very loose tolerances, and the machine will take care of all the final dimensions later on. I'm gonna guide down the saw blade so it's close to the cutting zone, just like that. Stop it right there. So, we're ready to cut. We've got everything locked in position. Again, we're gonna be doing just this initial cut here just to get it nice and square with all the bars aligned in the same length. I'm gonna initiate the saw on. Whoa. Okay. I've got a hydraulic feed here on this left-hand side. I'm gonna slowly ease it down until the cut. It's gonna come down just like that. Oh, that's a lot quieter than I thought it would be. Yep. For some reason, I assumed this process would be like really loud. No, the saw cut is pretty gentle. It's a lot less effort than something like this over here, like a vertical bandsaw. I might have seen that at some supermarkets. Yeah, where you'd have you have to, to kind of push it through. That that one requires a lot of force. You got to push it through here, but this one is kind of semi-automatic. You just kind of let the head fall down. Yeah, with the it's blade. doing all of its own force by itself. Yep, that's right. Ah. I totally, I thought you'd be over here like, no, no, like, no, no. like a freaking lumberjack cutting the thing, but you just, you just, this is very casual. <laughs> yep, and it automatically stops when wow. once it reaches the bottom of the cut. It's nice and done. We'll bring up the saw, lock it in place at the top here so it doesn't fall anymore. Copy. Then we're gonna move away all the debris. You see all these. So you did this part just to make the front of this That's end right. flat. That's right. Lock that right there. I'm gonna pull this through, and I'm gonna use this one on top as a length guide here and that'll be nice and easy just like that up against the bay the blade boom line that up nice and then you just clamp that in and let it go that's right wow. clamp it in dude and then from there just let it rip <laughs> let her rip we're gonna bay blade this bitch. i thought this was gonna be so much more violent 
than it is. It just, it looks, this saw looks very intimidating. Yeah. And this is a relatively Kill. small saw too. So it's honestly- Oh, this is a small one. This is a relatively, this is one of the smallest ones they have. <laughs> so when it comes to like large industrial scale, aluminum cutting, this is uh, honestly like a baby machine. Yeah, this guys, this is just a baby saw. Sorry. Yeah. Like, I expected so much more violence and all I got was like a, a nice and quiet saw. There it goes, and it, and it turns itself off and everything. What the heck? That's right, and here we are. Wow. 12 fresh bars ready to machine. Dude. These are ready to go, and it'll join the rest of its family. Right here. There we go. Wow. And so where does this go from here? So from here, from the saw cutting, it'll go straight over to our Haas VF2 SS where the machining will take place. All right. You want to get into that? Let's get into it. Cool. How much does that box weigh? That's not bad. Okay. <laughs> Here's. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not bad at all. I keep expecting things to be way worse than they are. So we're bringing all this aluminum over. That's right. We're going to take it over here to our Haas via 2 ss So this is a Haas vf 2 ss in the okay. vertical CNC center. And right now we're cutting our new Mako V4 handles. Oh, wow, so we're making a Mako, right? That's right, that's what the stock we just cut here. So this is our pallet system that we're loading in the material. You guys wanna take a quick look here? Oh man, how much does that weigh? <laughs> it's probably close to 40 pounds. All right. So the way it works is that we've got the material here loaded in, held down by these low profile clamps. They're called pit bull clamps and they hold them down with thousands of pounds of pressure. And so this particular part is two operations. So we've got the first operation on this top side here. Once this is done cutting, it'll get flipped over to this side down here. And then once these are done, they end up looking just like this. We'll take a look right over here. Oh, wow, that's a smorgasbord, holy cow. So this guy's cutting the parts. That's right, yep. And it's generating a bunch of tiny little shavings that we call chips. Oh. They look a little bit like this and they all go right over there. Let's go take a look. Oh, really? So you have like, oh my God. <laughs> yeah, so there's a lot of chips. This is a 55 gallon drum. Of and just metal Of shavings. just metal. And that's why we have all of these drums because we fill them up really quickly. Oh my they come God. right out of the machine right over there. You see, oh that's yeah, our, look at that. That's our chip auger and our very professional looking auger chute right there. It goes straight into the bucket and it looks just like this. Oh, you can just, yeah, that won't hurt your hand? Nope, it's not. Oh, yeah. wow. As long as you don't squeeze it like like, like Hulk smash. It won't. Oh my God. Yeah, it's very fine. It's really light. It's very light. Oh my God, it weighs nothing. I mean, I guess it's just like powdered aluminum, huh? Yeah, each of these shavings are only a couple of thousands of an inch thick. So they're very, very small and thin. It's basically like foil, but cut into tiny little pieces. So, okay, so you take the, you've got the stock that we just cut. Yep. And then you're basically affixing it to the board here. Yep. And so we have one machining process, two machining processes, and then it goes on to bead blasting, polishing, all that. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Oh, oh my God, what is that? That's a fan. Oh, what? So it changes its own bits. So wow. It, it, we have some in-process automated cleaning going on here. Really? So the fan actually at a certain RPM, it'll spin up and then it'll essentially shoot out the fan and then generate an enormous amount of wind so that we can clean up all the chips and the coolant and it's now done. It's done? Ta-da! Dude, now we have finished handles here. That's right. So we take a look over here. This particular pallet is what it looks like right before the machining is done. Sure. And then in the machine here, you see a pallet that's completed all the machining. So you can see that these handles up here, the top side and the left and right side, those are done. We still need to complete the bottom and they're still connected. Ooh. So you can see over here, that's why it's still connected. So these ones on this side are finished on one side and then the other side needs well, it's to It's actually be... finished on three sides, the bottom right. and the sides, which is over here. So you're just doing this last milling operation. That's right. Okay, so we've got this and we just finished that in the machine. What that's right. comes after this? Well, right after this, we've got all the manufacturing done. So it's gonna head over to our finishing department to get a bead blast before we send it off to anodizer. All right, let's go do that. Yeah, let's go check it out.
Okay, so we just machined the handles. Yep, so once they're done machining, they get brought over here to our blasting department. And this is the finishing stage that gets done before they go to anodizing for that color and coating. So we're finishing the handles. Right? Yeah, so That's essentially the finishing the yeah. change of the texture and the aesthetic. So it's, it's a dual property, really. Okay. So we do this for cosmetic purposes and for actual practical applications. Right out of the machine, the parts look great, but you can see that there's a lot of small imperfections that leave it kind of scratched. And so what we'll do is we'll put it into one of these four cabinets that have a variety of different medias, and those medias are gonna travel essentially through a gun of high pressured air, and it'll impact it at high velocity, causing this matte texture. So this is essentially what it looks like right after the blasting. So. And so you're doing different finishes for the different handles, right? I, I know obviously you've got the Mako right here, but like, do you have a different process for the other handles? On the blasting cabinets, we have that number right there that dictates the type of media that we're using. Okay. So that's a 50 to 70 mesh glass bead media. We got walnut shells over there. That's for cleaning purposes. That's 180 to 200. Oh, look So there it is. Bill, our blasting expert, just finished a batch of the Mako handles, so he's gonna pop them out of the fixture. We have this custom made so that Bill can hold on to a bunch of handles at a time yeah. without the high pressured air pushing it all over the place and having it fly out of his hands. So I, I'm assuming he has to do it multiple times to get all the That's right, public, yeah. Right? So you can see that he's only able to access one side of the part. And so to do the other sides, he's gonna have to rotate them to hit all four sides essentially. Oh wow, so this is potentially a four step process. Yes, wow. it's pretty labor intensive. I can see that. The handle finish, I mean, it really looks gorgeous. The the, the difference in one step, right? We're, we're going from this yeah. to this. We took it from just a slab of unfinished aluminum to yeah. this, and then we made it look pretty. So what's the step after this? After this, it's gonna go straight to anodizing. Anodizing, okay, cool. So you're gonna take this, ship it off to anodizing, and that's gonna get whatever color you want. That's and right. And then when it comes back, is there any other process to that? After that, it'll come back in for inspection. We'll take a look at all the details of the product, make sure that it's all accurate for the manufacturing. It's uniform, the surface finish, the color looks great, and then it'll head straight into assembly. Really? So it just, so the handles are pretty much done after this point in terms of what you guys do with them. That's right, yep. Wow, awesome. Hey, sorry to interrupt this epic B-roll, but uh, by the way, we have a code with Squid Industries. This video isn't sponsored, but if you want to, you can use code Will Hirsch at checkout on any Squid Industries product, get 15% off, support us. Bye. Okay, so we finished the handles. What's next? Like what, what the part next of is the blades. Blades. blades? Yep, that's right. Okay, so where does that start? It's right here. Oh, like this is the material. This is the material right here. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, so we got 20 sheets of 410 stainless and 8 inch thick. That's a yeah, lot of there. steel. You wanna help me move it over there so we can talk about it? Yeah, sure. All right. Ugh. Oh. <laughs> okay. Hey, you need a hand? Yeah, I would like a hand. All right, yeah. Oh my God, how much does this weigh? About 1,300 pounds. Oh, you know, a casual 1,300. All right, right there, it's cool. Holy this steel is gonna go into a laser cutter. Sure. And it'll cut out the profiles just like a cookie cutter would, just, just pop them all out. So what do they look like after they've been laser cut? It's gonna look just like this. It's got the shape, but it's very unfinished. That's right. So you go from this, you have a shit ton of metal. That's right. You, you cut it out. Where do you go from here? It's gonna be thrown into one of our two drill presses. Okay. So we've got a variety of different reamers here. We'll throw them on here. It's a manual operation. We'll drive it down and we'll essentially bore out these holes. They're laser cut undersized so that we can bring them to exact size with the right tooling. All right, so you got your blade, you cut it out, you make the hole the right size. That's right. Then where do we go? After the holes are the right size, it's ready for fixturing in one of our CNC's. So let's go ahead over there and do some machining. Yeah, let's do it. So now that the blades are freshly reamed, they're ready to go into our fixtures right here in our Dusan DNM 4500. So we'll just pop them in just like that. This one goes the opposite way. And then we'll take this custom made clamp here and we'll place them right on top of the blade. Okay, so that you're gonna screw down and that'll hold it. That's down. right. We'll have two screws that hold them down. The tool will come down and it'll machine all the way around on the important side. So things like the Zen cups, the Zen nubs, 
the chamfer is around so it's not pinchy. The crown spine so that's nice and comfortable. We yeah. do all of that here in this operation. So this is essentially just finishing the outside of the blade. That's You're getting right. all the yeah. chamfers and all that. Where do you go from there once you've got the machining on the blade? So after the machining is all done, we'll throw it in the tumbler so we can kind of kill any of the harsh edges that's been left over by the laser or the machining process. And then after the tumbling, I have the heat treatment and it'll be ready for, for laser engraving. Okay, so what is the tumbling process like? Tumbling's right over there. Let's go take a look. Cool. Okay, so we just got finished machining the blades and we're finishing them. That's right. So, yeah, so we'll take a look inside. We can see. Oh yeah, look at all that. So inside this particular tumbler, this is a giant finishing W5, stands for five cubic feet of media that can hold. So we've got various media, but not all media are rocks. For instance, these cones are made of plastic, but they're actually Whoa. coated with this very abrasive substance. And so there's all sorts of different media. So we've got ceramic, we've got plastic. We also have walnut shells and corn cob. It really depends on what you're trying to do. So if you change the media, you get a different finish. I That's guess. right. Yeah, so you can actually go from something really raw to mirror polished if you have the recipe with the right medias. Oh, you want to turn it on and show how it looks like? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Go ahead and try that right there, the green button. The green button. Yep. Excellent. Oh my God, that's a lot of numbers. <laughs> Holy crap. This is really loud. All right, and then do I hit the red button to stop it? No, you can keep it on. We'll keep it going. All right, so we'll let it go. We'll let it go. Oh, that's much quieter. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so we finished the blade. Yep. We finished the handles. I guess we're gonna assemble things now? Not yet, we gotta make the hardware. Oh, you make the hardware? Yeah, we're making it now. Oh, yeah. I thought you were just buying that No, still. we buy some of it, but we do make a lot of it here. What does that entail? Well, it entails a Swiss slave. So oh. here on this corner, we've got the Citizen Syncom Elto. What's up, Yuki? Hey, what's up, guys? Hey. So Yuki's our Swiss slave operator and machinist. He takes care of majority of our hardware. Wow. And he's currently getting it set up for the next job. This machine is special because it is extremely accurate and Swiss laser are originally developed for watch parts. So as you can imagine, oh, sure. really, really small, tiny accurate parts. This is one of the only machines in the shop that goes to a resolution of five decimal places. That's 10 millionths of an inch. Wow. <laughs> we're making pivots and we're making bushings, some screws as well. So let's take a look inside the cabinet and see okay. how it works. All right. So here in the cutting area, the way it works is that there are two spindles that work simultaneously. We've got the main spindle housed inside here, and then we've got the sub spindle that works simultaneously that works on the tools back here. So there's a bunch of cutting tools that cut the front side of the part, basically one half of it. Now, once it's done cutting on that half, the sub spindle will come over and it'll grab the part. And then the main spindle tool will cut it off the bar. And then that bar will be separated. It'll come over here and there's a bunch of tools that interacts with the sub spindle on the back side. What are you making? That's right. So right now we're making our pivots. Oh, hey. <laughs> see right there, take a look at that. Wow. You can see all the pivots we just made. Wow. So these are gonna go straight into assembly or they're gonna go to black oxide to get that cool black finish that we have on the ink series. Are you making just pivots on this or what, what are you making with this machine? So we're making pivots, we're making bushings, and we're making screws. Wow, oh, so you're making the bushings too. That's right, yep. Wow, how accurate can you get with the bushing? Typically, for the bushings, we try to keep all the dimensions within two tenths of a thousandth of an inch. Wow. <laughs> Two tenths of a thousand. thousand. Yep, that's right. So for instance, like our pivots on the diameter here, right? So we machine this barrel diameter to 0.1877 plus or minus 0 0.0002. So I'm assuming there's a lot of like benefit to being able to machine something this accurately. Oh, that, has that changed your process at all? Oh yeah, it's changed a whole lot. Now that we've been able to dial in all these tolerances and get everything really tight, the tuning has been so much better, you know, the fit and finish for all the product, the swinging action, pretty much all of that has been elevated to a whole new level because we can control that whole process. Wow. Would you say this is the final stage before we get to putting it together? Yeah, so we've got the handles, we've got the blades, we've got the hardware, now it's ready to be put together. Dude, sick. <laughs> So 
we've basically done every part of the manufacturing process. Yep. This is insane. This is so much more than I expected. Like, yeah, there's a lot more that people realize. It's just far beyond anything I've seen before. So yeah, this is super, super cool. Cool, thanks. As we saw with you know the Swiss lathe, that was the quality. But to me, what's also equally as important is the timing. Oh, of being yeah. able to scale and go from making 10, 20 trainers a week to you know two, three, four, five hundred and upwards. You yeah. know, in order to really do that, you have to have the machines in house because no one's going to prioritize your parts like like yourself and your own team. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Okay, so next time we're gonna talk about taking all the pieces we made yep. and put that together in assembly, right? That's right. Okay, great. So thank you so much for this experience, yeah. dude. I really appreciate it. Thanks for coming out. Really, really like having you guys out here. It's been so much fun. All right, make sure you get subscribed so you can see how we put all this together next time. Thank you to Lucas for allowing us to come out here and uh, we'll see you later, boys. See you later.